Let's take a look at solving equations by multiplying or dividing. A few steps I want to throw out here first of all in order to do this solving. Well, any time you're asked to solve an equation, that means your goal is to get that variable by itself. So we want to find the variable, see what's hanging out with it, and then do the opposite to get rid of it. And when we do that opposite thing, we have to do that on both sides of the equation because that equation is a very delicate thing that equals sign saying that whatever's over here is the same as what is over here or equal to and if we do something here well we have to maintain that equality by doing the same thing on the other side so let's take a look at a few examples of this first one right here 10n is equal to 40 let's apply our steps find the variable there it is Okay, then we want to see what's hanging out with it. So we focus in right here. Don't be thrown off by whatever you see over here. At this point, honestly, we don't care, care what's on this side. We are very interested in what's with the variable. Sometimes it's helpful, if you want to, to start out by just drawing a little line through there to separate the two sides of the equation. We have the left side and the right side. Okay. Now, what does it mean when we have a number written beside a variable? What operation is that? That's multiplication. Well, if we're multiplying by 10, what would be the opposite so we could get rid of that? Well, the opposite of multiplication is division, so we're going to divide both sides of our equation by 10. So divide by 10 over here, and I'm going to do the same thing on this side, dividing by 10. Okay, then clean up. Well times 10 divided by 10 is going to leave me with just the n. That's what's left there. And then on the right hand side, 40 divided by 10 is 4. Now, just a word on my notation. When I said divided by, I like to use the fraction bars like this to show the division rather than the old fashioned sort of division symbol like this and I would encourage you to do that as well because I think it fits better with when you get to more advanced equations so that would just be a suggestion that I would have also when we get here well let's double check and make sure we've got the right answer we don't wanna give an answer that's incorrect especially when I can check it and make sure that it's right so what I'm gonna do so I'm going to take that 4 and put it back in for n. That's what this is saying. n is equal to 4. So anytime I see an n, I can put a 4 in there, and it should be the same thing. So if I do that, I have 10 times 4 is equal to 40. Well, 10 times 4 is indeed 40. So that works. Okay, we can always check our answer. All right, then, let's take a look at this next one here as we head on down the page. We have... Q, or excuse me, V <laughs> divided by 8 is equal to 2. Now, be careful. Sometimes people will automatically say the answer is 4 without even trying anything. Well, is it 4? Let's check this. All right. So, find the variable. There it is, a V. See what's hanging out with it. Well, what's going on between the V and that 8? Again, we're focused on that side of the equation, the left-hand side. What's well, being divided by 8? What's the opposite of dividing by 8? Multiplying by 8. So I'm going to multiply here by 8, and I'm going to multiply over here by 8 as well. Same thing on both sides. This cancels out, so we're left with just the V. So V equals 2 times 8 is... 16. Ooh, 16. Not what we thought, maybe, based on the initial look at it. Let's check it. Take the V, that 16, put it in there. 16 divided by 8. Sure enough, it's 2. All right, then, let's head on down. We've got some negative stuff showing up here. Process is the same. Again, look for the variable. In this case, it's on the right-hand side. That's okay. We can deal with that. What's hanging out with it? Well, there's an 8. What's it mean when they're written next to each other? It's multiplication. So, to do the opposite, to get rid of it, divide by 8, divide by 8. Then, this side, we're left with just x, because we had times 8 divided by 8. Those cancel each other out. They undo each other. And then we've got negative 104 divided by 8. 
Well, first of all, it's a negative divided by a positive, so we know it's going to be a negative answer. And 104 divided by 8, if you want to grab your calculator, you can do that, but you'll find you get negative 13. Again, we can check, put it back in, make sure that it works. Okay, let's head up over here and see what we can do with this one. In this case, well, there again, find the variable. There's a b. What's going on with it on this side of the equation, remember? We're focused on one side at a time. b divided by 18. How do I get rid of dividing by 18? Well, the opposite is multiplying by 18. So multiply by 18 here, and I'm going to multiply by 18 over here as well. Okay, then clean up. So the 18's cancel out. I'm left with just b is equal to, should make that a nicer b so it's not confusing with a 6. Then 18 divided by, or hey, 18 times negative 6 is going to be, well, again, it's a negative times a positive, so it's going to be a negative number. And 18 times 6 is 108, so in this case, it's negative 108 is my b. Again, put it back in if you want to check it. And you should check it to make sure that you've answered correctly. All right, then, next one. Ooh, getting a little crazy here. Going to look at with a fraction involved. Okay, well, first of all, the initial reaction might be, and let me rewrite this over here and see if we can't get a better feel for this. I could write this as 4 fifths times r is equal to 32. That would be the same thing as what I have written here. Okay, so that being the case, uh, there's a couple ways I could approach this. First of all, I could say 4r is being divided by 5. I want to get rid of that first, so multiply by 5 on both sides. Then I'd have 4r is equal to 32 times 5, that number. Then I could divide by 4. But rather than that, let's take a look at how we could get rid of this fraction all at once. Well, when we were over here, it's multiplication. We divided to get that variable by itself, so we could divide by 4 fifths. Now, dividing fractions. Huh, refresher here. When we divide fractions, we end up multiplying by the reciprocal. Keep change flip, some say. Well, let's just skip to the flip. So rather than dividing by 4 fifths, let's multiply by 5 fourths. And let's take a look at what happens here. Notice in this part, the fraction part, I've got a 5 on top, 5 on the bottom. Remember what I can do if I have that? Those cancel out, right? And same thing with the 4s. I've got one on top and one on the bottom. So those all cancel out, and I'm just left with R. Perfect. Exactly what I'm looking for. I want that R by itself. Okay, so how did I do that? I multiplied by the reciprocal of this thing. So we got to do that on the other side. Got to keep, keep the piece. Got to do the same thing on both sides. So multiplying by 5 over 4. Now... Remember, if we've got a whole number to multiply fractions, don't forget those fraction skills. We've got 32 over 1. Then I could multiply straight across. And do you notice here we've got the 32 times 5 divided by 4? That's what we talked about earlier here. So it shows up. But another way that we could do that is we could simplify, right? We could simplify that 4. That would become a 1. This would become an 8 divide the 32 by 4, and then multiply across, and I would end up with 8 times 5 over 1. Well, 8 times 5 is 40 over 1, just be 40. Okay, well, I could put that back in here and check and make sure that it works, and sure enough, it would. 4 times 40 is 160, divided by 5 is 32. All right, that one was kind of crazy, but we still figured it out. A little special situation there. All right, last one. Working with decimals. Hopefully not too scary. Same rules and same steps here could be applied. We want to find the variable. There it is. What's hanging out with it? 0.3. What's it mean when they're written next to each other? Multiplication. How do we get rid of it? Division. Here we go. Divide by 0.3. 
divided by 0 0.3. Okay, what's left here on the right side? Y. Then negative 20 or negative 27, 2.7 divided by 0 0.3. A negative divided by a positive again. That's going to be a negative, and 2.7 divided by 0 0.3 is 9. So y equals negative 9. All right, solving equations. Oh, excuse me. By multiplying or dividing, a few things. First of all. Remember, if we do something on one side, we've got to do it on the other side. Got to keep the peace. Secondly, if we're asked to solve, it means get that variable by itself. So figure out what's going on with it. We do the opposite of that thing on both sides. Simplify, and off we go. Remember, you can always check your answer by plugging that thing back in there. And finally, if you come up with a fraction situation, well, we can skip to the flip. You could divide by the fraction, but ultimately you're going to end up multiplying by the reciprocal. So let's go right there. And notice how the things cancel out to be left with that variable all by itself. Same thing applies when we're dealing with negatives. Same thing applies when we're dealing with the decimals. All those rules. Uh, do things on the si uh, both sides, getting that variable by itself. Hope this video was helpful. Keep working hard on those algebra skills and all of your math. You can do it.